Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating a Maven project in Eclipse. Uh, for this tutorial and in the next tutorial where we're going to look at Maven on the command line, don't worry too much if you don't get everything or if you, if you try this out yourself and you can't replicate exactly what I'm doing, I'd say don't worry too much about it because the purpose of this video and the next video in this series is just to kind of show you what Maven is and what it can do. And uh, then when we do the actual spring stuff, hopefully you'll feel a lot more comfortable. So I'm in Eclipse here and I've got the Maven integration for Eclipse uh, plugin installed in Eclipse. And I'm going to go to the file menu and go to new project. Well, actually, I'm going to go to new uh, other here and I'll scroll down this list to Maven and I'm, I've expanded this Maven folder and I'm going to create a new Maven project. So if you've installed a suitable Maven plugin, you should have this in your list of uh, project wizards. So I'll create a new Maven project. I'll click next and um, I'm going to accept the defaults here. Click next again. Now here, uh, what, I, what I can do is um, Maven actually uh, there's a Maven website and it maintains a list of possible project structures uh, with each different kind of project structure having various uh, files in it and various folders of various kind of directory structures to it. And these different project structures, kind of different basic projects, are called archetypes. And here, if you, if you just wait a bit, you see that it's filled in like an archetype list here, a list of possible basic projects that I could select to get started in creating my own project. I'm actually going to type quick start in here and hopefully we'll find a quick start project. Uh, now I happen to know that at least at the moment um, there's a, a an archetype that has quick start in the name which is a basic um, Java kind of program. Here it is. It's this Maven archetype quick start project. If for some reason you can't find that, if you try this yourself and you can't find it, I'd say don't worry too much because we're not going to... Um, actually, we, we probably are going to use it again later now I come to think of it. Uh, well, don't worry too much because in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to find the best simple archetype for a Java project. But hopefully you can find this one and if not, don't worry about it. So I'm going to select this one, this archetype, um, and I'm going to well, yeah, click next. Actually, let me just go back. So I just want to quickly point out that this archetype, it has a artifact ID, which is kind of the name of the archetype. And it also has a group ID, which is like, um, it follows a package name convention. And it, indeed it could just be a package name and it groups the different archetypes from a different provider or whatever. And it's also got a version ID. So this is the Maven archetype quick start from org.apache.maven.archetypes from this group of archetypes. And I'm going to click next. And now I need to provide a group ID for my own uh, project that I'm going to create here. And again, this is, um, this is like a package name. It follows the same convention. Uh, and so I'm going to type com.caveofprogramming.com. Uh, let's let's make make something up like spring dot test. It doesn't matter too much. If you've um, if, if you're familiar with Java package naming conventions, it's just a normal package name. You can make it up. You could call it com dot your name or whatever. You, you don't have to own this website. Just like a normal package name. So make make something up for there. The art artifact ID. Yeah, that's going to be like the name of this particular project. So let's just call this test prog or something like that. Again, it really doesn't matter too much. And then we need a package name here. And actually this is auto filled in com.caveprogramming.spring.test and then my uh, my artifact ID. So um, so that's ideal. And I'm going to leave the version at this, this snapshot thing here. This is just a version number, so it doesn't matter too much. So none of this is like information that you have to go and get from somewhere. It's just information that you have to make up basically. And I'll click finish. And uh, Maven uses um, the archetype that I selected, the quick, quick start archetype, the quick start template, in other words, to create this basic Java project. 
And although this looks a, bit, a little bit ferocious, it's actually quite simple. We've got a source folder here that's got a package in it containing a app.java. And if I click on that, we see we've just got a hello world Java program here. I've got another folder here, which um, this, this is all specified by the quick start archetype or template in other words. And, and here we've got, this is actually just a dummy JUnit test case. If you don't know JUnit, don't worry, because I don't think we're going to be using it in this series of tutorials. But if you do, do want to write uh, JUnit test cases for your code, you would put them in here and Maven will run them automatically if you use Maven to, um, to compile your project. And uh, we've also got, which is kind of interesting, let's just take a look at this folder actually, that's yeah, just a source folder. We've got um, this list of Maven dependencies here and uh, Maven can actually pull in jar files that your archetype needs automatically. It can download them from the internet. So something I should have mentioned actually was that your computer must be connected to the internet to, um, to see that list of archetypes because Maven's going to get it from the internet as far as I know. And uh, when you try to run your project, if not before, it's going to also download any jars that are necessary. And in fact, Maven maintains a, uh, a repository of jar files that it's using for different template projects. And you can see here, it's actually showing me the path that um, the Maven, um, the Maven um, uh, repository, I, I forgot my English there, is, is actually located in this case. I'm on a Macintosh in users John W. Purcell M2 slash repository. It's in that folder. And that's where Maven will download jar files to that it needs to build my particular um, project. And I've also got this um, POM.xml, which stands for Project Object Model, I think, um, or something like that. So let's, let's click on that. And because I've got the Maven uh, plugin installed, Maven Integration for Eclipse plugin, it's going to give me this special view here of this XML file, but it is just XML. And if you click on the raw XML tab here, then uh, you can see the actual XML. And here's the, um, here's the kind of information for my project. I've got the group ID that I made up, the artifact ID, the particular version number. And uh, packaging here, this means that um, Maven could, if you wanted it to package this project as a jar file, um, and most importantly here, I've also got this list of dependencies and you can see I've got one dependency here. Hope, I'm assuming you're kind of familiar with XML, but if you're not, you can probably see that this, how this works. So just tags uh, with information in between the opening and closing tags all the time. And they're kind of nested within each other. So here I've got one dependency and this is going to actually download the JUnit jar, which is here, to the Maven repository. So um, a dependency can be just a jar file, or it can be a whole other project. Um, I, as far as I know, I'm not a Maven expert, it can be a whole other archetype, I believe, that can then pull in lots of jars. So basically, this is going to download jar files that your archetype needs. And we're going to be looking at this more in future uh, let's let's just run this actually. I'll just select app.java and click run. And again, your your computer should be connected to the internet because if you uh, need any jar files, then Maven is liable to download them um, when you when you run the project. Let's just run this. Uh, so there it says hello world down here. Um, yeah, actually, I'm not even sure actually if if this is just running it. Uh, using Maven or using the Eclipse default, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm sketchy on Maven um, and I only know the minimum that you need to create spring projects really. Now the great thing about Maven is, let's supposing we did want to create a spring project, supposing I wanted to start writing spring related code here, what we can do is I can go to pom.xml and you see here there's, there's a dependencies tab and this will enable me to add more of these dependencies uh, without typing them by hand, I can actually search for them. So I could go to the Dependencies tab and I could click um, Add, just this Add button to add to this list of dependencies here. And we've only got JUnit at the moment. If I click Add, and then let's search in here, and I'm going to search for Spring, actually. 
and I'm going to wait a minute and you need of course an internet connection for this and it says searching spring and here we go and actually uh, I happen to know that I can download I can narrow this list down further let's say um, let's say spring frame work so I'll type spring framework in there and here we've got a bunch of standard spring uh, dependencies which is, which is great for example if I want the spring core jar files I can it's, it's really important not to just click this uh, and add it because um, it seems like you don't always get the latest version although I, I think this is the latest version but I recommend expanding this list here and then you can see different versions of jar files uh, that you could add as it as add as a dependency and let's make sure we've selected the latest one 323 here and I click OK and that's added that as a dependency and save the project and in fact um, it, it hasn't had to download this because I already had it in my Maven repository but if you haven't got it there maybe it will at this point download it if um, you don't see any downloading happening you can also select your project right click it and go to Maven and update project and try clicking OK I, I don't know if um, this box will really help you, you could try it um, tick that box if you want and click OK and then it will hopefully download any jars that are, are needed for your project so that's like a, a really quick introduction to Maven and that's uh, almost all I know about Maven in the next video in this uh, series of tutorials what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, how to do the same thing from the command line and the reason for that is again I just want to help you understand what Maven is you don't have to follow along on the command line yourself because as you as you can see we can do everything we need to with Maven directly from Eclipse and uh, just just to show you if I look at the project uh, object model XML here we can see that we've added this extra dependency in here and um, so uh, this this whole plugin takes a lot of the work out of finding jars and adding them and if we weren't going if we weren't using Maven like I tried writing spring projects without Maven and certainly you can do it but you have to go off to different websites and find the jars that you need and make sure that they're, they're the latest version and everything and so it just makes it so much nicer to use Maven and having having started to use Maven now myself I uh, I'm, I would almost say that I'm a fan of it now uh, it, it just is um, it's a really great tool okay so we'll look at the command line stuff in the next tutorial and you can just watch the video and it will help you understand how Maven works and how I in particular how I selected that quick start archetype uh, and then after that we'll, we'll move on to starting to look at actual spring itself so join me again next time if you're watching this on YouTube this is a free video that's part of a bigger course and you can find a link to the full course in the description on YouTube and don't forget you can find all my latest stuff at www.caveofprogramming.com so until next time happy coding